Okay, these linear programming problems are really long and there's a lot of steps. So watch this video as many times as you need to in order to understand what's going on. Okay, the first thing I did before I turned this video on is that I read through the problem and I circled every piece of information that was important. My goal is to read the paragraph only once because it's so long. So if I can circle everything that's important, then I'm good to go. So I color coordinated everything that was about the large bookcase, I put in green. Everything that was about the small bookcase, I put in blue, okay? And then I circled 24 hours because that has to do with both the large and the small. Now, the very first thing we need to do is decide what our variables are. Now, if the problem is confusing, I always start by writing the profit function first. The profit function has to do with money. So I find everything in the problem that goes with money, okay? If I'm creating an equation, it has to be about the same things. So money goes with money, goes with money, okay? If I'm talking about building a something and I'm talking about, you know, um, wood, would go with wood, would go with wood. Uh, painting would go with painting would go with painting okay so you always have to have the same thing being talked about in an equation so if I find my profit word that means cost and money and so I'm going to use my numbers that are about money so profit would equal the amount of money that it costs for a large and the amount of money that you get for a small so I'm going to have 50 X plus 20y. Now that profit equation helps explain what x and y are. x would be the large bookcases and y would be the small bookcases. Once I create a profit equation, that helps me know what my variables are. The next thing I do is I create a list based on my variables. I'm going to put everything that has to do with the large bookcases in one list and everything that has to do with the small in the other. So I make two lists. Okay, the first thing I come to is six. Six hours would go with the large bookcase. Two hours would go with the small bookcase. Fifty dollars goes with the large. Twenty dollars goes with the small. Twenty-four hours has to do with both of them, so I'm going to leave that alone for right now. At least two large means at least two, and this would be at least three, okay? If I've separated my list, it makes it a lot easier when I get down to my inequalities. So, inequalities are constraints, they're restrictions. So I need to create inequalities that describe my situation. The first thing I'm going to look at is the things that go together. I have six hours and two hours. Hours goes with hours. If I'm trying to find a inequality, you always have an inequality that has to do with a total. My 24 hours is a total. So I know that some inequality has to involve 24 hours. Hours goes with hours goes with hours. So I've got six large, two small, has to be only 24 hours, so I need less than or equal to 24. That is my first inequality. All of those have to do with hours and making the bookshelf. Now, I'm going to cross those out because I've already used them. Then I'm going to go to the next one, $50 and $20. Money goes with money, goes with money. So I've talked about profit. I've already used those two. Now, I need to use at least two and I need to use at least three. If I'm talking about making at least two bookshelves that are large, that means that the x value, which is large, has to be greater than or equal to two. This means my large bookcases, I'm making more than or equal to two of them. Then at least three. My y value has to be bigger than or equal to three. If I've used every number from my list and every number from my problem, I am ready to get started with my graph. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph. I'm going to graph my x is greater than or equal to 2. I'm going to go to my x value. This is where x is 2. All the way up and down is where x stays 2. Okay. Try to be as accurate as possible when you're making this line. If my x values have to be bigger than 2, then look at my x-axis. Where are the numbers bigger? On the right side. Then I'm going to graph my y values. y has to be greater than or equal to 3. So my line is going to go side to side. My y values on my y-axis are bigger on the top and smaller on the bottom. So bigger on the top means above my line. Okay. Now remember, when you're graphing inequalities, the part that you keep is the part where they are overlapping with the shading. Okay. So, so far my answer is somewhere in here. I don't know where yet because I'm not finished, but it's somewhere here. I'm not going to use down here and I'm not going to use over here. Okay. My last constraint that I have to graph needs to be changed into y equals or y is less than or slope intercept form so that I can graph it. So let me rearrange that one below. Okay. I'm going to move the 6x over to the other side by subtracting it. If I move it to the other side, I do the opposite of what's there. Then I'm going to divide by 2. Remember, when you divide by 2, you're going to divide both the negative 6 and the 24. So negative 3x plus 12. That's what my new equation becomes. Now, if I have negative 3x plus 12, I go up to my positive 12, and my negative 3 tells me my slope. It tells me to go down 3 and over 1. Down 3, over 1. Down 3, over 1. Down 3, over 1. Now, I need to be very explicit in making all of those points all the way across it. If I don't make these dots clear and I count correctly, if I just drew my line, it's not going to help you moving forward. Okay, so these dots must be very accurate because the next step will be harder if I don't do that correctly. Now, this is less than, so we're going to shade below. Now, what part of the graph is shaded in all three of those places? Inside this tiny little triangle. Okay. There's a corner on that triangle that I didn't draw, but I'm going to draw now. So I've got a corner right here, I've got a corner right there, and I've got a corner right there. I'm being very explicit about my corners because the corners are vertices. Okay. If you're determining the vertices, it means that you are um, naming the corners of your shaded region. Okay, so if my shaded region is a triangle, that means that my vertices are all the corners. So I have three corners in a triangle, so I'm going to describe my three corners. Okay, this top corner is 2, 6. This bottom corner is 3, 3. The last corner is 2, 3. Okay, if any part of this video is confusing, go back and watch it again. Okay, I'm going to summarize real fast. So, first I read the whole problem and I circled everything that was important. Then I went to my profit function and I figured out which numbers had to do with money because profit is about money. So, I took my money that had to do with X and my money that had to do with Y and I created a profit function. That helps me determine what X was and what Y was. Then I created a list about all of the details for everything that had to do with a large bookcase and everything that had to do with a small bookcase. And then I circled any totals left in the problem that had to do with both. Then I created constraints or inequalities based on this information. So money went with money, went with profit. Hours went with hours, went with 
my hour total. This at least two gave me a x is greater than or equal to two, and my at least three gave me y is greater than or equal to three. Then I graphed all three of my inequalities, okay? How did I know that there was three? I've used everything in my information table. If I've used all of my information, then that means I don't need to make any more inequalities. Now, after I graph these, I was careful with my shading. If you're having issues with shading, use your intercepts. So if my intercept is at 12 and it says y is less than, then I'm gonna shade where the y values are smaller than my intercept. Again, if my y value is at three, I'm gonna shade where all of the y values are bigger than three, so I shade it above. If my x value is at two, I go to my intercept and I shade everywhere where the x values are bigger than the x intercept that I have. I always compare my numbers to my intercept and I shade where those numbers are bigger or smaller. Okay. Determine the vertices. Vertices are naming the corners of your shaded region. So I shaded in the parts that overlapped. I made all my corners very clear, and then I named them. This is 2, 6, 3, 3, and 2, 3. Are we all with me? Now, the last thing you need to do is you need to maximize the profit. So it says state the answer in a sentence to form maximization of profit. Okay? So, if I'm maximizing the profit, that means that I'm trying to decide which combination of making large bookshelves and small bookshelves is going to get me the most money. So, these are the different combinations that I can have. Your combinations always come from your vertices or your corners. So, one option is to make two large bookcases and six small bookcases. One option is to make three large and three small. One option is to make two large and three small. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what the profit would be for all three of these corners. Okay, so basically I'm asking the question, what's the profit for each one of your corners? So I'm gonna take my profit equation, 50 times X plus 20 times Y, and I'm gonna plug in two six, I'm gonna plug in three three, and I'm gonna plug in two three. So the first one I get 220, the second one I get 210, the third one I get 160. So which one of those is going to maximize profit? The first one. So at the very end of this all, I'm going to write a sentence. The maximum profit of $220 happens with two large and th six small bookcases. Okay? If you don't understand, watch this video again. The second example from yesterday's class can be found in the second video.